I talk a bit about the Hearts Library and I actually do see a picture of a library when I wander into my heart. And when I'm working with clients, they invite me into their Hearts Library and what we do is wander around and we have a look at perhaps some chapters of their life or some books in their life, whether it was from 5 to 7 or 13 to, to 16 or even just a few months in a holiday somewhere where they are scared to reopen that chapter because it's too horrific or too scary or they're too ashamed. And until we can wander back into the, our, the library of our heart, and for me I've got, you know, 51 and three quarter years of emotional experience, as we all do, as many years as we've been on the planet. And until we can befriend, open those books freely and read them and own them and laugh at them and cry where we need to and just know ourselves, you know, that old to thine own self be true. How can you be true to yourself if you don't know yourself? How can you love yourself if you don't even like yourself? You can't, you can't know somebody you don't like. And if you don't even know yourself, that whole, you know, loving affirmations is just bloody empty words. You're saying it to somebody that you don't even know. So, for me, the past 19 years of getting clean and sober, I've had to go back and make amends and I've had to review what's my stuff and their stuff and clean up my side of the street in my life. In doing that, I had to make the decision to choose my recovery from drugs and alcohol and my son's quality of emotional life over my biological tribe. And I have other clients that have to do that as well. And when you ask yourself as a mother, if you have to choose your children over your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your aunt, your uncle, your whole tribe, if you had to choose your children's welfare and that meant you were disconnected from that biological tribe, how'd you, how would you go? That's what I had to do when I got clean and sober. I had to, I was basically given in no, you know, black and white terms that if I crossed that line into sobriety and recovery and changed as I needed to, that there was no place for me with some members, not all, with some members of my biological tribe. And let me tell you, I didn't do well. <laughs> and I still, you know, I still uh, find on my birthdays and on, you know, the family days, the Mother's Day, the Father's Day, the Christmases, those days are, are you know, they're demanding. But as each year that passes, you know, that old saying can you bear the accusation of betrayal from another and not betray your own soul and I wouldn't have been able to live my, with myself and look at my sons in the eye if I didn't get clean and sober and I couldn't get clean and sober in that biological tribe and that is why I had to expand my heart's library I had to read and learn and study and pay elders because my elders went with my recovery you know so I had to pay therapists you know which as I mentioned in a previous blog the word therapist is a Latin word and it means attendant to the soul, which is what elders in a tribe do. When you haven't got them, you've got to go and pay. You know, when I'm running workshops for psychology students, I say to them, this is a sacred role. You are a paid elder. There are people like me on this planet that don't have them through emotional trauma, through death, through geographical limitations. Some people don't have elders. And when we don't have our tribe, we need to find heart tribe and biological tribe isn't an option we need to find heart tribe and you know it started out with my boys and I on October the 12th 1995 it was like I was jumping off the Titanic onto a life raft with this with a child under each arm and a lot of people on the Titanic and a lot of people in that life that old life said what are you doing are you mad I left a marriage and I left a tribe and it looked like, if you just looked at what I was doing, perhaps I was going insane, but I was actually claiming my sanity. And that's why investing in the heart's library, not just through the written word, but the spoken word, 
where I hear myself reiterate wisdoms I've learned and I check in with myself, are you just saying this shit, Cynthia, or are you living it? And most of the time I'm living it, but also most of the time there's lots of room for improvement. So I'm uh, broadening my heart's library so I can write this next book and become, download the new app and become a better version of myself through making sure I review what I've learned and make room for even greater learnings.